knows what Duke, Kansas, and Kentucky feel like. They get every team's best every night. Lamar Simpson, Tim Flaherty, Evan Burroughs. Our officiating crew here in Hartford. Always a great environment, and the Huskies control the opening tip. Nice building today, inside at least, and it's freezing cold outside. Where else would you rather be if you're in Connecticut? UConn at 14 and 2 on the season. Jackson Johnson and Alex Carabin. Shooting the rock pretty well the last little while. 64% on the field last three games. Shot clock dwindling down for Cam Spencer. The Rutgers transfer. Spencer off the ball fake. Comes up short with the runner. Rebound to the Huskies. Quick kick. Caravan also short. And the Hoyas get the rebound. Yeah, it's going to be important for Georgetown to kind of cancel out those second shot opportunities. Find a body. Maybe a little bit easier without clinging on the floor. But this is still a very active UConn team on the glass, especially because you have a guard at 6'5 and Tristan Newton. Owen Brumball off the heel of the rim. Rebound is contested and controlled by the Hoyas. Good hustle from Supreme Cook, the Fairfield transfer. Brumball way off. There's the cleanup from Cook underneath. Hey, there aren't a lot of offensive rebounds or zero footers, I call them, that, that he won't finish with emphasis. I mean, it's really Supreme Cook knows how to either put you in the basket but finish strong around that hoop. You know what? Last couple games, Georgetown's also been better crashing the offensive glass. Out-rebounded Seton Hall the other night. Spencer. And he knocks one down. Yeah, it's, it's really what Georgetown's going to have to be careful of when they collapse because they're not the best defensively on a string in terms of you know, what they do together. They're going to have to understand you got to stay closer to the shooters a little bit. You might not be able to crash all five on the defensive end. One ball. Attacking the goal. Wild take. They need to raise the rim. This is where UConn's so good because of Tristan Newton's patience. Attempt to run the shot clock here. With a very balanced team. This rolls in and out from Johnson. I think I like most about UConn's offense in transition. They're never going to You're never going to see a lot of bailout shots. They'll try to get some and ones out, but they're never going to be in a hurry. Always in control of deals. He's looking for their fifth straight win. All four have been without Donovan Klingon. This gets popped back out. Huskies at numbers three on one on court. Caravan knocks down another triple. That's that modern age fast break. You got three on one, and you have one guy, one wing going to the basket, the other one flaring out to three. And Alex Caravan has been really, really good the last three games, averaging 17 and five, shooting about 63% from three. Alex, it's just. 10 of 16 now, 11 of 17. He had to deal with a big cut of his uh, right eye after an inadvertent elbow in the last game. This gets popped away from Brumbaugh on a shot clock violation against the Hoyas. I think it's one of the, the aspects of UConn basketball that is lost at times. Obviously, they're spacing. They stay out of each other's way. It's harder to recover. And again, in, in transition, look at the spacing. You got one going to the basket, and Cam Spencer and, and Alex Caravan flaring out. It's just hard to make a decision on who you guard. They move the ball so efficiently. They are incredibly unselfish. Season high, 23 assists against Xavier on Wednesday. On 31, it made field. Newton, it deflected, picked up by Castle. Time running out, and an air ball, and... Good defense from the Hoyas on the other end. Well, we talked to Ed Cooley before the game. He said, he, look, he's... To say He said it a lot on the golf course. No shame in my game when he's putting from 30 yards off the green. Same thing today. I'll muck it up. We're going to make it ugly. You know, we got to stay in this game. And Ed Cooley fans, maybe Providence fans, the last 10, 12 years would understand that sometimes that's how you got to win games and stay in games. Can't be pretty all the time. The problem is the lack of an inside presence, and there's a good example. It's Cook trying to go over top to reel in that entry pass, but got deflected away. So we're off and running in Hartford.
an old what they ran and they what they watched it look man I, I got i got my own notes over here i got to get ready for a game here you know, always good seeing our uh, our alums come back rudy johnson also in the building he was in my class so it's the a wealth of uh yukon history and brotherhood it's beautiful and the tradition continues here a place they've called home for almost a half century the old hartford civic center uh, three off the mark from Jaden X. That's the one guy who's got to get it going, and he can fill it up. He's got to get into his really good. Newton too strong on the other end. Georgetown with the rebound. The Hoyas just one for six from the field to begin the game. Hoyas lost four of their first five to begin Big East play. They haven't beaten UConn since 2017. The Huskies have won six straight head to head. And the drought continues from the field. Offensive rebound. <laughs> With a putback. Yeah, probably got fouled too down there. It's, this is a situation for Georgetown to simplify things. You got to put the ball on the floor, get your head right to the rim, because there's no way Danny Hurley wants to get into his bench past Samson Johnson. And remember, no Donovan Klingon makes him a little bit thinner, but that's why you have to challenge the big guy inside. That was vision. Castle, and then the extra pass for Johnson. I love that. that UConn has done such a wonderful job it, again and Hurley told us before the game coach Hurley We played against zone man-to-man full court press half court press. They've seen it all But they put Castle in the right spot There's a foul called against Cook as it goes up for another putback. Take a look Alex This is what I'm talking about. You put a guy who can make a decision right in the middle there at the Big East logo now Supreme Cook has to make a decision. No rotation nice soft pass up top to Johnson but you need a decision maker and you have to have confidence in your decision making as a player when you're playing against again in that high post area against the zone well, that's why those assist numbers jump off the page for UConn they're 11th in the nation in that category and it's not just one guy who does that and we know Newton and uh, he leads the way but every player on this roster is capable of that and that's that's why this team has been so difficult to to handle because they can play against every style of defense we always talk about i need the coaches tell you i need shooters we need facilitators guys who can break pressure can go get us a shot but what you also need is unselfish players and, and UConn has continued to do that the last few years to find guys who just want to win. And then it's as simple as that. You want to win a championship? This is how you do it. We have the blueprint. The Cook splits the pair 8 5. First touch for Hassan Diara today. Pass all through to nobody. We thought that Cam Spencer was going to be there a moment or two before he arrived. And this is where Georgetown can really take advantage, but they have to do it with their ball movement. Not a team that's going to spread the ball around. They have individual scores, but it's, it has to be a bank-bank play. You swing the ball, get out the side of the floor, now you make a quick quick decision. You talk about Epps are trying to get him going, but he gets rejected by the arm. Out the pass, Castle ran into resistance and a wild take. Rebound for the Hoyas. Good numbers back defensively for Georgetown. Stuck the two fielder today, trying to build his strength up. The freshman from Idaho, Kid Ed Cooley, told us he's he thinks he's ahead of schedule. He really likes him, so he's going to be a heck of a player. Oh, he'll line up a three, and then he'll skip it off the rim. He's got to learn, though. If we're talking about him over here, you got to make a good play, young man. When we talk about you, you got to make a shot. That's how it works in college basketball. Montrez <laughs> Styles with the clutch grab and transition. Foul against the Hoyas. UConn, they, they've had to battle against Xavier on Wednesday. Led by as much as 14 in the second half. Late push from Xavier made that more of a contest. Huskies are heading to the line here. Just shows the, the depth of this UConn team. Five players wound up scoring in double figures. And it, they really had to clamp down late with the run that Xavier had at the end of the game. It's a tough, tough building to plan. We have some really, really good ones, obviously. So you need that when you're a power school. But 
The Centa Center is one of the toughest buildings to play in because they're so knowledgeable. It's cozy in there. It's loud. And hey, this week in the Big East, never mind national, every ranked team lost to an unranked opponent. And then you look at what happened in the top five. I mean, UConn, I mean, assuming they take care of business here today against Georgetown, you never want to assume anything. I mean, they could, they could wind up the new poll and number one in the nation. They could. I, I just, I think... Nebraska is a good team. I don't know if they'll penalize Purdue. I believe Purdue is still number one no matter what happened last week. Obviously, UConn can make an argument. Wouldn't surprise me either way, though, if they were if they were one or at least two. I would say UConn. Chris Style fadeaway wouldn't go, and Georgetown just cannot buy a basket early in this game. Foul for the loose ball. It's interesting because they're getting to their spots. I mean, they're getting to those high percentage areas in the paint, some point blank, but they just. Uh, and this is a, a, a small ball situation with Alex Caravan, 6'7, being the biggest guy on the floor for UConn. So once you get in that paint, you just have to, to Georgetown, you got to slow down, tell guys, look, we're getting where we want to, take our time. Make a good shot. Boy is just two for twelve from the field. He's in there set. Hassan Diallo. Defensive. Another caravan. It's stripped. And here comes Epps on the run out. Epps high off the window. No. Ran into his own man. Quick transition. Newton up court one on one with Epps. Goes up and scores. Uh, Tristan Newton does such a nice job. He's, you can tell veteran guards versus young guys because his priority was to score the ball, protect it, score it. If you get the contact, great. If not, you're going to get a basket. A lot of young guards try to get the contact first, Alex, and forget, oh, by the way, i got to make a shot and get neither in the end of time. Right. First touch for Wayne Bristol, senior guard. Started his career at Howard. Got a foul here. Uh, against the Huskies, Alex Caravan whistled for the contest. And Tristan Newton, just the consummate leader. For, it's kind of been their, their, I don't know, their template to hang around in games just a little bit. They just don't have that push to get them over the top. Yeah, it, it, would this qualify as mucking it up? Yeah, you a little think, bit. For Ed Cooley? I mean, this is how you stay in games, but you, you, you got to make a couple of... Bunnies. You know, they're just missing too many easy ones, Georgetown. And F score for five from the field to begin the day. Here's Cook, the one who's hit a field goal. He's now three for three for the floor. Yeah, I really like the job Supreme Cook has done this season. You know, undersized big. You come from a mid-major school and you know, you're thrust into Big East basketball and, and really national level of what he's doing is scary and there's that guy who has who's been scary as well cam spencer's one of those players i really believe that just he's so undervalued and underrated by everyone outside of i would say this building <laughs> i don't think people know enough about him maybe in maryland where he's from but so valuable sorry not a pocket pass got tipped away there could have been a good one Spencer coming in after one season at Rutgers. Cool. And one! How'd he do that? Well, this is exactly it. The, the game plan should be from the start now that he's got it going. He's feeling some confidence, but this is Samson Johnson. The spin, the body, look at the strength. Supreme. A little English. Butter on that roll. You don't see you, you seem like a brunch guy to me. You don't oh, like yeah. a breakfast guy. I'm a big time brunch guy. Yeah. I'll wait online in New York City for brunch. I'll be one of those for sure. Johnson uh, committing the foul there. He got into some foul trouble Wednesday against Xavier. That became a factor down the stretch in that game. I mean, right now it's Supreme Cook 9, 10, <laughs> I'm sorry, and UConn 14. And now Supreme Cook is is out. That's what you know. As a player, you know coaches have rotations, but when you're on when you're on fire, you want to stay in the game. The message is somebody else needs to score, please. <laughs> yeah. We are separation. A return pass from Solomon Ball. 
skip it to the corner. Spencer puts it on the deck. Here's Caravan. He's really good in that painted area with the little floaters. I thought earlier Steph Castle had when he put on the floor. He got fouled, but should have just caught it from about the same area and shot that nice little floater. That's veteran versus freshman. It's downhill. Finally, he gets one to drop. And he's got a tough matchup. Hassan Diara is one of the best defenders you'll see, not just in the Big East, but in the country, at getting up into guys and making guys uncomfortable. Diara attacking, in trouble. Stewart helps bail him out, and a foul is called. Like he was slipping on the baseline there. On up getting bumped. He's the foul. foul. Senior. I think one of three players who stayed on the Georgetown roster this offseason. We've seen so many of these big time overhauls in this league in particular. Butler, we know about St. John's. This Georgetown game, that team has pretty much been stripped down to the studs. Jay Heath has been consistent his entire career, though. And you need a guy like that if you, if you, if you want at least one to stay. I know they haven't had success the last few years in terms of wins, but we'd like to see guys stick around the good ones. Six to shoot, which Newton a fadeaway three no. Rebound for Ismail Massoud. That broken hand in the preseason missed some time, but can, has come back to start. For can really shoot it too, yeah. Alex. He really, I just think he's got to slow down a little bit. Very talented offensively, Massoud. Fielder on the take, this will go the other way. That's a really nice job by Jalen Stewart. He's undersized a little bit. Literally sticking his nose in, watch the left. Or the right. Yeah, I'm actually there were actually two of them <laughs> each way. Good call by the official there of a good defense standing a guy up. Hoping that he can add some size in the coming years. Front yeah, fielder. Get some weight. From the ring, Caravan. You just have to know your scouting report again. You can't overhelp and sag too deep on number 12 and number 11. You really got to stay a little bit connected to those two for UConn. And that continues his hot shooting from three. Shovel pass, drum ball underneath. Couldn't connect with Fielder. This will go back to the Hoyas. Caravan, by the way. 12 for his last 19 from behind the arc. And I just. Take a look. There's so much help. You turn your head, and now, I mean, that's just too much space to give a guy like Caravan, especially knowing how hot he's been the last three or four games. They're going to allow the late substitution here from Georgetown as Dontrez Styles checks in. UNC transfer. He can ball. He has some pretty good moves. Masood off the mark. Styles rips away the re rebound. They're going to call jump ball. Possession arrow to the Hoyas. How about Tristan Newton? No. Most guards will take off, expecting their bigs to grab it. He's sticking his nose in. I mean, that's really, to me, the difference in this UConn team this year is their guards and the way that they just fight for those rebounds. Here's Heath. Isolation with Newton. Attacking the cup, it's Styles rolled it off the rim. There's Cook, and he's fouled. He'll head back to the line. Supreme Cook is a workhorse, and he's not just a second shot player either. We saw him make a nice move for the up and under earlier, and he is just playing like a man amongst boys so far in this game. So earlier this season, I was doing the Georgetown Rutgers game at the beginning of the year, and still seemed like he was trying to find his game. But he's certainly showed more confidence over the last little while. And he's 16, 17 games. He's, he's only been below 40% from the field three times, Alex. I mean, that, that's just... He understands his game. He knows who he is. Where in a day, an age where bigs are shooting threes, he said, you know what? My, my money is down low. I'm just going to outwork guys. And that's what he's done so far. 12 points. Go along with six rebounds. 
12 to the 14 for the Hoyas. So far, it's been a one-man show as they try to hang here in nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> They've been getting some stops on this end, Georgetown. Seven to shoot as Newton floats this one where only Carabin can catch it. Carabin trying to back in against Bristol. Wild take, shot clock violation. That never touched the rim. And we hit the under eight in what's turning into a bit of a rock fight. 19-14, <laughs> UConn. Supreme Cook had his way before he got here. And you know what? He, he, to me, because of the system, because of Ed Cooley, the influence there, the staff Ed has with him, he brought from Providence. Right. Supreme Cook is, is at an advantage no matter where he's playing as long as he's got those guys. They're, you're right. It's the entire staff and the strength and conditioning staff for Providence. That's who we brought with him. 19-14, just a five-point game. Here's Cook. He's virtually done it all for the Hoyas to start the game. Rumba didn't have a point at 12 minutes last time out. He'll attack the rim and come up empty. And they're just missing so many layups. Nice pass inside. Hard foul. Castle gets hit. He had a little happy feet there before he got hit. Sometimes in transition, the refs are looking up top and not necessarily at the feet. First look at his feet here. Good pass. Six. Stephon Castle. Two shots. Pretty clean there, huh? I guess that's why I'm not wearing those stripes. <laughs> I don't think I could. As much as I. I wouldn't say fought with the rest because they actually had the last word with that. Yeah. The T and the shape yeah, of two that, hands combined. But I, I, I used to get it, get my spare share of uh, clips in. So I don't know. I don't know if they'd even allow me to try to make the show at this point. So I really am stuck here next to you, Alex. Well, I'm sorry. Yes. There are worse places to be. <laughs> at the line. The Big East freshman of the week last week. Here is how if they're going to continue to feed Epps here, try to get him going. I think you have to and then make you kind of make a decision. Man. Styles, tough oh. hook. Nice shot from the baseline. Look, Epps can't do it by himself. You know, Supreme Cook's doing his job. Epps has to step in here, obviously, but as the leading scorer, you know he's going to get his shots. But Styles is the next guy. Montrez can really score the ball. He's got to be more consistent, more efficient. Aramand against Epps. Trying to turn the corner ball, knocked away. Hoyas have it. Here's Epps. He'll enter it to Cook. He's had his way in the paints. That's where Georgetown's found a majority of their points so far. A really nice job again. Now, this is where Dr. Styles is really good. A little fade away, creating some space. Shoulders are square. I love it. And then right there, Cook understands that old that old Georgetown Alonzo Morning was the best I've ever seen running straight down the middle of the floor and stopping just they didn't have that circle underneath then but right in front of the rim and being big that that is and i guess you put that uniform on the spirit of alonzo morning is, is in you as a big at georgetown boy and you you just want this rivalry to become even a sliver of what it was back in the day. I mean, you, you experienced those wars firsthand. This was a nasty rivalry for many years. Yeah, the, the series is all square at 36. I, that, to me, it blew my mind when I read that earlier in the week that I thought UConn may have had the advantage, but no, Georgetown, 36-36. Many years, Georgetown dominated, dominated. Juggled by Newton. Gather and put it on the deck. Straight off the bounce. Spencer a three. Looked like he may have kicked those legs out, but he gets the benefit of the call. Ed Cooley is wondering if yeah. he perhaps tried to lay into it. It used to be a point of emphasis. I don't know how these things go away because to me it's still about safety of both players, but watch the lower body of Spencer kicks that right foot out and gets the call. Last year, that was an offensive foul. I just, I don't understand how these rules just fade away. The emphasis is not there. I think that should still be very, it should be prominent in terms of 
shooters protecting them one if you step underneath them, but also the defensive player who's also in the air It's, un it's an unfair advantage there for the defender Spencer a grad student and she transferred him from Rutgers Dan Hurley told us before the game He wanted a guy you know to bring in when they lost so much after winning the title last year They wanted to bring in a guy who hadn't played in the tournament before still had that hunger you know, wasn't resting on his loyals from, uh, laurels from winning a title or playing in the tournament at a team like Kentucky or something. He fit that bill. Yeah. You got 3,000 points in your backcourt for UConn between Newton and Spencer. Career points. And take a look. This is, to me, these are the impactful portalers, I call them. And, yes, we know about... Max Aismas, one of the best scorers in college basketball last few years. L.J. Cryer doing a great job for Kelvin Sampson at Houston. But Hunter Dickinson, the one that came to everyone's mind. But there was a top ten list that came out earlier in the season in October. And Cam Spencer wasn't in it. It's fascinating how these lists are put together. But right now, it has been a huge Huge difference for UConn success is Lead score right. That's out of control. Gets the benefit of a foul call. And again, it, I keep coming back to what Ed Tui was telling us. That it feels like this game is being mucked up a little bit. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you, those mental mistakes, again, subjective, I guess, for people. The three, following a three-point shooter maybe shouldn't be in the area. But discipline is so huge in games like this for a team like Georgetown. On the road. Look, the crowd's not really into it. It feels like a Sunday afternoon in Hartford. It really does. You know, very subdued. Georgetown right now, it, this is a game that they can, if they make some bunnies, they get a couple stops. It's a game all of a sudden now. UConn's, we know how good they are offensively, and they can get it going. They go on runs, but right there. A backspin on the second from Epps. So he splits the pair, six-point game. Mr. Newton coming off a double-double against Xavier on Wednesday. Castle now on the turn of the corner against Epps, who's swiping at the ball, forced a hurried shot. Cook comes down with a rebound. And they'll outlet quickly. Heath, out of strict. Spencer with a takeaway, three on one for the Huskies. A pass that nearly got away from Ball, and he spun his way into the paint, made a mess of the possession, and it's a travel against the Huskies. And yeah, that's tough. Cam Sprinter's going to be kicking himself because he, he thought, it looked like he thought Solo Ball was going to cut towards the basket, and there was, the pass was kind of in no man's land, and Ball couldn't really do much with it. Six turnovers now for Utah. but only averages about ten and a half per game. Five minutes to play in the first half. Low scoring game. Epps stripped. And back to back turnovers from the Hoyas here. Caravan lines up a three. And he buries it. Discipline. He dribbled between two guys in a double team. And Turnover leads to three, and now the crowd's into this game. Ed wants to talk about it. Third triple for Caravan, who now leads the Huskies with 11. Still working on the footwork, laterally trying to guard different positions, but offensively, there's not much that I think, the, the, not much more the NBA needs to see. Yeah. Take a chance on that kid. I'm sorry, UConn fans, don't be upset with me. It's just... <laughs> It's inevitable. Up inbound, and Newton commits the foul against Epps. Those fouls start to pile up for the Huskies. This sends Georgetown in the bonus. Yeah, right out of a little quick timeout, yep. too. It's crowd was into it. You got a turnover, a three, and now you kind of right. let Georgetown settle back in at the foul line here. Fascinating to watch Epps, such a terrific scorer. The rotation or lack of rotation on his his jump shots. You can see it on his free throw too. Normally, you know, for good, really good shooters, good scores, there's a tight rotation. It's almost a fast rotation on that ball. But if you take a look, it's, it's like a knuckle ball. But he seems to be able to. It's consistent though. You know, it, it's the same shot. The repetition. 
30 against Seton Hall on Tuesday. 30 of Georgetown's 70. Third time that he scored 30 or more this year. Now make no mistake about it, he is a scorer. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the one part that Georgetown's missing is that facilitator. When you get into this situation, Red Cooley, this is what you have to play with. She pass, Caravan. And he'll head to the line. Oh, yeah, they, the, the fact that UConn has the success without Klingon is going to give him so much confidence when he comes back. But look at the movement. Right in the middle there, someone's got to make a decision. Two Georgetown players in no man's land. And what made that work was Cam Spencer on that left wing staying stretched out. And Caravan rolling to the hoop. Easy. I saw him taking some shots prior to the game, Klingon. Could be... A week away, maybe. Mm. Yeah, well, there. We don't, yeah, I know coaches say it, but we love doing it. You look ahead, and you got Creighton in front of you with Ryan Kaufman. Or you're, you're hoping, if you're a UConn fan, <laughs> that you can get Donnie Klingon back, or Kling Kong, as <laughs> I said. I can't call you that. Man. No. Not when you're sitting on the bench, man. When you're on the floor, dominant. When you're dug in double, I call you Kling Kong. Kling Kong. Yeah. See, well, that's also because it's hard. To it's hard to say. <laughs> 9.20 and he throws it off the rim put back no from Cook and there's another layup missed but Cook will head to the line we come back that chilly Sunday afternoon in Hartford, Connecticut nine point lead are meeting in this building in quite some time 2016 the last time Georgetown came to Hartford played the rest of them in stores since UConn rejoined the Big East by the way, in case you're curious for the UConn winning six in a row head-to-head, -head, the all-time record in the series is Georgetown with an eight-game winning streak. I think those, those, those six, right, were from the UConn being back in this. Yes. This. Georgetown has not beaten UConn since the Huskies rejoined the Big East. He's by seven. Caravan, does he have another? He bets! Caravan with his fourth tray of the half. 16 points to lead the Huskies. Communication has to be perfect when you're guarding number 11 and number 12 in white. Rolls it off the rim. That could have been close to basket interference. Caravan comes away with the board. And the Huskies with their largest lead looking for more. It'll be free throws for Castle. I just I remember one of my buddies who was in the building, one of the greatest shooters ever. Look at the feet. Caravan's feet. And Ray Allen would tell me if your feet ain't right, nothing's right. But when your feet are, this is what happens. And Alex Caravan has not only worked hard on repetition, how that ball's released, the release point, but getting your footwork together, that is where your work starts. That's where the shots are made before they actually go in the basket. Your feet have to be right. If your feet aren't right, nothing's right. Oh, he's, he's unconscious right now. 14 for his last 21 from deep. And he gets a well-earned seat. Steph Castle at the line. The freshman from Covington, Georgia. Yusef Sigare, freshman from Mali, enters the game for the Huskies. Seldom used this year. And he has the task of guarding Supreme Cook. Goes up hard and will earn another trip to the strike. And, and that's what you don't want if you're Dan Hurley. You do not want to have to get deep into your bench. But Supreme Cook, look where he's posting up. I mean, he's got two feet in the paint. That's when coaches say, get your work done early, which means defensively, you don't want to. You want to stop with your feet, heels on that low box, and not allow the offensive player to push you back. Get your work done early. If you don't, 
to send Supreme Court to the foul line. Right on cue. <laughs> the freshman will check out of the game. Caravan comes back in. Already combined the 26th free throw of the game. Georgetown, they're hanging, but it feels like it's a bit by a thread right yeah. now. Well, UConn, what Charlie told us before, they've seen everything. They've played every, di every different way, fast, slow, open, you know, full court, half court. So this team has built UConn to withstand a lot of these lows. So they haven't had too much time. There's a rebound for Cook. It's coming close to a double-double in the first half here. Ninth rebound. Just a, a couple more zero footers made by Georgetown, and they're in a better spot. That's way out. Well, he has really struggled today. One for eight from the field, just five points for the leading scorer in the Big East. And, and I don't feel like there's been a lot of pressure put on Jade Naps either today. I, I, I feel like Hurley is, Coach Hurley's more focused on what they need to do defensively in all five spots than just zero and one guy. And one for Newton. Defensively on the other end. Well, when it rains, it pours. You now it's hard to get yourself up on the defensive end when you're struggling on the offensive end, and Tristan Newton recognized that. A wonderful job. In, in his last four games, Newton is averaging two of those games zero points, <laughs> and the other two he's about 16 and a half. It's, it's interesting how. He can find his way and navigate, lead his team, but also lead them to wins no matter if he's scoring the ball or not. Huskies with their largest lead. Thirty-six twenty-three. He's guarded by Spencer. Naps in trouble. Naps kept his pivot six. Three from Bristol. Book it. And a big basket for the Hoyas. Timeout, Georgetown. They get it back to 10 as we close in on the final minute and a half. Well, Georgetown's taken five for where that would have happened earlier, but working on that on the bench. No blood, no foul. Big East, Georgetown, <laughs> UConn. You kidding me? Half, a minute and a half remaining. We have the first two. Sleep lost the handle. Not sure where he was going. Heads up court. He'll take it all the way himself, and he learned some free throws. That's like that's about the seventh layup they've missed today, Georgetown. So again, doing everything right. So get around that basket. It's almost like the spirit of Donovan Klingon is around the rim, a little tentative. A chance to score with that clock stop and going. If you can go into halftime and you're Georgetown shooting. 29% single digits, you're gonna you're gonna feel probably pretty good about yourself. Yeah, we mentioned Dominic Click. He was working pregame. Wouldn't call that, you know, it's full speed, but uh, they think that he has been practicing with the team. Speak for yourself. That's spoken like a, a little a short person. That's full speed for a big guy. Are you kidding me, Alex? Speak for yourself. I did have a chance to talk to Donovan. He's, He's lost about 10, 12 pounds in this time, so he's really taking care of his body and want to take some of that weight off and alleviate some of the stress for those his feet. Oh, another good defensive possession from the Hoyas, and a foul is called. Boy, UConn just, uh, you, they've had a, a couple opportunities to break this game open and have not been able to take advantage. They are with the foul. That's his third. Again, it's it's a, a weird kind of a feel. It's there's a low. It's there's not a lot of energy coming from UConn side, even though they're up. And Georgetown, Georgetown is almost playing like they're waiting for UConn to make a big run. This is when you have to attack. This is when you have to say, you know what? We're going to shock the world today. 
I just don't see that that energy level of Georgetown consistently in this first half. Dan Hurley wants to talk it over as he burns his user to lose a timeout. 51 seconds left in the half. Mentioned it's been teams are in the Big East. As you can, St. John's almost went in and knocked off Creighton at home. And yep. if there was a foul called late, it would have been, a, in my opinion, it would have been a different outcome in that game. Speaking of that, they almost knocked off this UConn team. Absolutely. Final minute of the half. Huskies lead by eight. But leave the environment here. Utah unable to pull away. Seven to shoot. Newton puts it on the deck, swings it to the corner. There's Caravan again. Alex Caravan with 19 in the first half. And they'll rise to their feet in Hartford. Shot clock turned off. Epps will try to answer, gets hit, he'll head to the line. Caravan the foul. And Dan Hurley is about to blow his top. Now, the problem with this is, for Caravan is, wow. you know, the, the refs are rewarding a bad shot. Uh, I, there's contact. There's definitely contact there. It was after, after the release, not on the release. Could you argue a makeup from the other end? You could. You could. Is, is that? So, I don't think there's such thing as makeup. Are you kidding me? No. Well, this is helpful for Epps to pad his total, and also just to get Georgetown back to single digits here. I'd love to see Epps just one time hold his follow through. Just get back to that fundamental, hold your follow through, pose for the picture. Just to get that good feel of that ball release coming out of your hand. He struggled from the field, but he has six of his eight from the stripe, and the Hoyas are back within eight. Newton, easy inbound quickly to Jalen Stewart. His first touch, Newton and across the timing line. One of the foul, none given. Let's see here. Maybe there... Yeah, there was one call. Yeah, Wayne Bristol just... You, you, you got to almost let the guy run. And you wouldn't know it by the look of Coach Hurley's face <laughs> there, but... Huh. He couldn't hear the whistle at the time, but yeah, Bristol did get called for the foul. So Newton at the strike. I think it's the right call. Because Bristol was out of position. Yep. You know, you, you can't try to guard a guy with your back. <laughs> not expect there to be a foul call as the offensive player hits the floor. Newton in his 134th career game today, 120th start, splits the pair, Cook comes down with a rebound, and so it will be single digits here at the half. 36 combined free throws in a, a bit of a rock fight here in Hartford. Neither coach thrilled. Talking to Big East going fourth this season, 16 points, 10 rebounds to lead the Hoyas. All right, if, if you're, well, I'll give you a both here. If you're Georgetown, what do you need here to, to try to climb back into this game if you're Georgetown? Look, you got to make your bunnies. Make the zero footers and you're right back in this game. There's no shot blockers on the floor. And actually, UConn now starts the half the way they ended it small with Caravan in the middle. You have to attack to win if you're Georgetown. So it's Castle feeding the perimeter and Cam Spencer. Try to enter it to Newton, and this gets deflected away. Not kind of ending the half this way, and they start the second half with a similar-looking possession. The energy level is so important. Ed Poole told us that, not just for Georgetown on the road, creating your own energy, but for UConn. In this building, it's not like being on campus. You have to really create your own energy this second half. Just a little too flat. Keith puts it on the floor, goes up and scores. 
I think you have to continue if you're Jay Heath, Jay Nets, even Masood. I think you have to challenge the feet of the UConn defenders. Only 10 points in the paint for Georgetown. Castle, a little hesitation guarded tightly by Cook. And a foul is called. Called away for the ball on Heath. Yeah, Cam Spencer, really crafty, handsy type of defender, but now when you're playing catch up, it's just tough, and that's when Jay Heath takes advantage. He made one. It, it's horrible. <laughs> you add up, just only a handful of those missed layups, and this is a very different ball game. Spencer, back for Newt. Jab step from Newt. Caravan up top, pull on the timer, he'll attack the rim, and roll it in. Yeah, underrated driver of the basketball, Alice Caravan, and that's because he's so proficient from three-point range, you forget he can put that ball down with either hand. 21 for Caravan, his career high is 26. Baseline, it's Styles who gets fouled. It's a good for Georgetown to remember that you can shoot a jump shot anytime you want. But you're letting the defense off the hook. This right here, Styles using his size, taking advantage of a younger player. That's good basketball right there. Zero. Two for Styles. And by the way, 36 combined free throws. The most in the first half of any Big East game since at least 2018. We won't like see if we can find any further than that, but this is exactly what Ed Cooley wanted from his team to begin the day. It ain't gonna be pretty. <laughs> but you know what is pretty? That W. After you get done with the game, you see a W. It's down within seven. Shot a lot of threes last couple games. He certainly shied away from that here today. Castle for Newton. A high action here. Castle lines one up. And knocks it down. And one of the things coming into the season that didn't really get talked about a lot, you know, his jump shot. And, and this UConn staff said early on he's a much better shooter than they thought. And a much better shooter than they expected and continues to get better. Castle, yeah, so the preseason freshman of the, of the year in the Big East. That's off the double. Has some room to breathe. Picked it, gets set. Epps takes his own shot, way off. Rebound, Styles. Styles goes up. Can't get it to drop, but he'll head back to the line. Well, you almost have to know if you're a guard for UConn that Epps wants to shoot a jump shot. If you just stay in front, contest late, that's what you're going to get. But now your work's not done. Once that shot goes up, you need the rest of your guys boxing out. And, th and that's the one thing I think Dan Hurley's going to be upset about is what we forced a guy to shoot a long jump shot on, contested. Now under the basket, we got to do our work. We heard him in a timeout in the first half. Grab a ball, a rebound with two hands. We need to rebound. And this Georgetown team has not done a good job getting to the line this year. Today, it's already 25 free throws. They averaged 13 attempted per game in conference play. Dead last to the Big East. They've already doubled that. Long way to go in this one. Eight point game still. The other best thing that they've done is knock down their free throw. 77% from the line today. Second, the offense. Not a lot of room to work with. Spencer found some room, and he bounces one in. Well, this may be an old building. You don't want to walk around these locker rooms with no shoes on, I will tell you that. But they have the softest rims that you probably ever shot on. I imagine you probably have pretty feet, too. Uh, just, you just seem like the those guys. <laughs> Not a lot of world wear on them. And a good defense from Epps on the recovery. Georgetown nearly made a mess of it on the other end. And Cook, well, he has been so good at getting inside position. Battling for the loose ball there. He gets fouled. Third 
foul for Samson Johnson. Unfortunate, too, for Samson Johnson. Just <laughs> wrong place, wrong time, because it wasn't a great pass from Heath to Supreme Cook. There wasn't enough heat on it to get a layup, and now you're retreating, and unfortunate three fouls. So now, again, it changed. the complexion of the game changes. It's back to small ball for UConn. Georgetown has to be able to try to take advantage of that a little bit with Supreme Cook. It may be playing into their game plan, but you gotta hit some shots. Make some layups. He will stare down from Castle. Here's a three from Styles, and he knocks it down. Styles, really good patience here by Georgetown. Looking for the right guy. You extend out a little bit. Miscommunication down low for UConn defensively. Seven this half for Styles, just the second three for Georgetown this afternoon. Trying to make himself available down the lane, floated back out to Castle, six to shoot. Castle fadeaway short, rebound went right to the waiting hands of Newton, and he throws it away. This will be deflection ruled, and it'll go back to Yukon. Yeah, that was Newton hoping that Diara went to the baseline, didn't get there, but what a wonderful rivalry. Allen, a huge part of why he took the job, just the Georgetown brand, and yeah, you need time. Ed Cooley's not one of those guys that's that they say, oh, you got a year. He's like, no, 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 I, I want to go in right now. I don't want to just relax, put my feet up for a year. I want to come in and and try to lay some foundation of what I think could get us back to, you know, Georgetown Hoya basketball, winning ways. I love that about it. Newton with time running out of the shot clock. Dumps it off inside. Beautiful pass to Caravan. Again, it, you know, Georgetown and, and kudos to Ed Cooley, not only do they look a little bit fractured at times, but they make their opponent look that way as a we saw there, but Caravan Newton playing, playing it off. Styles in and out. Caravan looking to bounce this off of Cook, and this will indeed go back to the Husky. Yeah, I mean, both these players doing everything they can for their respective teams today. That's a, really a tough call. I thought Caravan was inbounds and then threw it off of Cook as he had stepped out of bounds. I think that should be... I think the call was pointed the wrong direction, but they got it right in possession. And there's a nice pass from Caravan. And a castle to finish. It's kind of what UConn does, though. Again, they just chip away at you. They're never in a hurry. They can do with big plays or they can do with little plays. Well, you back to 12. <laughs> what a tough take for Heath somehow manages to lay it in. UConn has not been able to break this game open. Caravan underneath. And he got caught from behind by Masoud. Today, this time he gets a layup to drop. Again, you know, two hard right-handed drivers, UConn allowing them to get to those comfortable spots. And that's the difference. You know, great job by Georgetown understanding no shot blocker. We got to take advantage. Heath up in the air. Way off from three. Rebound tracked down by Epps. And here's Heath into the front court. Heath going to go to the left. We are so good defensively getting his hands in there without fouling and, and the way he does it is one timing but he's got such long arms and great vision when that ball is exposed his quickness with his hands to knock that away and these are instincts that's hard to teach he was frustrated with the, the <laughs> possession but man that's that's a good effort enjoy that first Fadeaway jumper, pure. That's what he wants to do. He wants to get you on your heels. Wants you to sleep a little bit. And then that narrow balance in his feet gets him up in the air quick. Georgetown down. Georgetown within six. 
They refuse to go away. Gets it back in with his three foul. Caravan off the mark. Rare miss. Loose ball out of bounds to Georgetown. Had a good, good hustle this half to kind of turn things up for uh, Georgetown. You know, they, they really come out with the energy. I think that Ed Cooley has been trying to instill in them for 40 minutes. Good start to this half for the Hoyas. 6 0 run for the Hoyas, the closest they've been this half. Twice Masu nearly lost the handle. The defense from Caravan. off the ball face. Styles jab step. Driving left to the lane. Couldn't finish. Rebound. Cook juggled it. Knocked out of his hands. He still regains. Oh boy. Three wide open for Masood. He had too much time and a foul underneath. This will go against Georgetown, I believe. It's Cook. Yeah, Cook is working his tail off out there, right in the left. He's, he just pulls Samson Johnson backwards. Can't do that, obviously. But sometimes you can get away with those little pulls, grabs. But anytime a guy hits the floor, it just brings too much attention to the play. There's Castle. We're back it out for the hour. Switch creates some space for Spencer. I tell you, just you can't leave him. And what makes him such a great shooter is when he catches it, he's already down in a position to be able to shoot. Never catches and stands up straight. So you leave him for a second, he's got one motion. It's just up instead of down and up. I mentioned 11 and 12, so tough to deal with. They are the two scorers for UConn at double figures. Here's Cook off the shook and big knocky finish with the left. Spencer thought about the heat check. Now Spencer running out of room. Castle down the lane and it rolls off the rim. And we're getting a little taste. It may not be what it was in its heyday, but we're getting a little taste of the emotional intensity of a UConn. We've been talking about Caravan, but you know what? Spencer with four triples today. Well, a couple of UConn hockey fans here. Or as they refer to that team, the Ice Bus. Was for so many years, just like the students had to be bused down here for that. They had to bus the uh, hockey team and the students down here for that too. They it's play their games here. It's interesting. In, in the four, now five games without Caravan, UConn is shooting 30% Excuse me, 40% from three-point range, and with Caravan, they're just above 32%. So they have, you know, sometimes there's a give and a take. You, you, you think they'd be better with the big guy inside to take up some some of that slack, but they've done a nice job of being able to interchange and stay spaced out. Nine-point lead after the free throws. Three fouls now. Along with Caravan, kind of lost where he was on the floor. Scrambled to the loose ball, winds up with DR. DR in the front court, got swarmed in the paint. Yukon gets it back. Spencer thought about it. Oh, look at him. The seas parted for Stewart. And Jalen Stewart getting involved. I love it. My favorite freshman in all of college basketball, Jalen Stewart, the Seattle kid, getting the chance. Smith fires on the other end. Rebound, Cook, tie up, possession arrow to Georgetown. Now, this is awesome that Coach Hurley allows his young guys to be involved in big games like this. And you now Jalen Stewart, one of those highly touted of their five freshmen. Got some wonderful basketball DNA in his genetics. Played yeah. Brandon Roy in high school. Bad play pro. This is a pretty deep Connecticut team. Even without Donovan Klingon. By Anna Cook, and he's fouled. 
working with, Supreme Cook, he has bought into the ethos of fighting and scrapping for every inch. Has well, Ed Cooley loves fighters. They, look, you, you can be one of the best shooters that the, the college game has ever seen, but if you don't work hard, I mean, I'm going to play a lot for Ed Cooley. He loves his hard workers. He loves those blue-collar guys, and Supreme Cook fits right into that. But Trigger out of the inbound, and a three for Jay Heath. And again, Georgetown within single digits. And it allows Georgetown to get back into their zone. He had a point to talk. This isn't an opportunity to rest in the zone. It changes up the look versus a good offensive team. That's what you want. Diara, a three. It's amazing. It's, you know, he hits opportune threes. He's not a great three-point shooter, but he hits them at the right times for UConn. Coming off the bench the last three games, shooting 76% from the field. It's been a good spark plug for them. They needed the rest of guys. It's going to work against DR. Hooks it up and in. Wow. How about that? <laughs> Huskies quick in transition. Newton blocked. And this will go back to Utah. And Newton trying to play a little bully ball here, trying to force the issue with the whistles and not getting a call. Town continues to aggressively substitute, even though they only have a rotation that goes eight men deep. Karabin, 23 to lead the Huskies. Foul away from the ball. To be on heat. I mean, a big part of what changes the complexion of your team when you don't have a Don McClingan is. You know, you're looking for someone else off the bench to give you some minutes, and only five points, bench points, the DR3, and then the dunk by Jalen Stewart for Coach Hurley yeah. and the Huskies. So that's going to dig into that a little bit. Now there's DR, a nice hit down play. He's with patience. Such a wonderful auxiliary player. Well, he gives it to you at both ends, plays it hard, DR. Zero bench points in the first half, and now I have seven here in the last couple of minutes. Yes. Well, he got his man to backpedal and couldn't hit the layup, and that's been the theme of the day for Jay Nepps. Thought he did everything but make the basket. It even hit Diara with a little shoulder there. And Maybe he was thinking about that. Waiting to hear that whistle if it's going to be an offensive or not. Need a bucket if you're the Hoyas right here. Attacking Caravan with the first way off. Put the rebound. Never touched the rim. Shot clock didn't reset. And they hit a three from the corner. It's Heath. And a quick timeout for Georgetown. Well, Hoyas continue to. It was a very tough decision. You're, you know, you're born and raised in Providence. It's your dream job when you get it. it. Took them so far. They won so many games, and fan base loved them. And at you know, some point, you got to make a, a decision for your career, for your family. To give you an idea of the rebuild, Georgetown went 13 and 50 the last two seasons, including a 29-game losing streak in conference play. And it, that is a really low place to try to build from. It hasn't playing tough, that's for sure. They don't have the full complement of talent he wants yet. Oh boy, Spencer, and he's been perfect from the outside, five for five from deep. There have been a lot of threes that have been wide open, and look, you have to trust that if you run a guy off of the three-point line, if you're Georgetown, that you have help behind you. Sometimes that's easier said than done, but out of a timeout like that, you got to understand, I have to be ready to help my teammate if he runs a guy off that three-point line. Now here's Epps, wild look, hook shot. 
They are 8 for 21 on layups. can't stay in the game when you're 8 of 21 on zero footers and you're giving up three pointers at the other end. It's just it, it like it's showing it's just getting frustrating. Well, it's not as if the size differential played as much of a factor here today. We know Georgetown's a smaller team to begin with. Samson Johnson's been out of most of the game yeah. foul trouble. They just haven't hit their layups. Yeah, the I, the, the the best way to put it is UConn defensively, they have bodies on guys going to the basket, and they're bodying the offensive play without fouling. And that's how you want to defend. It really is textbook. And you're not just going to go out there and miss. Not the scores you, you have in Epson style. Right. And miss that many layups. Well, 8 for 21. Then when you get Klingon back, I mean, that, that, <laughs> that adds to yeah. it for UConn. Now you better have a floater or a pull-up from about 12 feet if you're playing against them. 12 point lead for the Huskies. The largest lead today is 13. Tough day for X. 4 for 15 from the field. Hook to their go to guy inside. That shot was altered. And this will go back to the Husky. That's tough. I think Styles might have crowded that weak side. When, when Supreme Cook has the ball, guys need to be lifted and spaced out in the corner. And you just know. They have four assists today. He's not going to get the ball to pass it. He's going to score, especially with a mismatch. Got to get out of his way. He's just trying to lull, hook the sleep. Goes behind the back against E. No. no. Rebound popped out to the waiting hands of Masood. Got the Hoyos in transition. He pass inside. Nicely grabbed by Cook, who gets hit. And a little jawing after the whistle between he and Newton. Like I said, we get a little, we're getting a little taste of the old school Georgetown UConn rivalry today. Not a full bite, just a little taste. There are some teams that you play that you'll help a guy up after you follow him. These two teams are not either one of those. And there's Supreme Cook running the floor. What a good pass and good catch from Heath to Cook. There's a foul. And you pull a guy down. I'm with Supreme Cook. Took a little offense to that. Hold the guy up. But you did no love lost between these two programs. Double technical has been issued. I don't think you need that. I mean, you get a lot. Look, you don't have to do a lot to get a tech today. You just, you don't. Cook, the foul line. The common person of the foul there. And it's the other one. But the chatter that you saw after the play, that was a part of the scouting report back when I played. So when you get up, you make sure you let him know. And the refs just knew they let you play. Come on, guys, let's just play. Now it's a little, little bit of over-policing for my taste in college basketball. Georgetown comes up empty at the line. Scramble for the loose ball. In and out of the hands of the Hoyas and the Huskies. Back to you, Tom. But this gets deflected away. Nice catch, Tom. I finally got a touch. Ray Allen's in the building, and I finally got a touch. <laughs> finally got a touch. Look at that. You gotta look alive down there. Yeah, but look, I went to I grabbed it though. I wanted it. I wanted it more. You did? Yeah, I did. Well, that's why you said you're the bigger guy, so I'm just gonna hide behind you and I'll be fine. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and I had to grab it and point at Ray, and he, right. he gives me the mutumbo. Like I finally got a touch <laughs> yes. with him in the building. Yes. Finally! Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. So after all of that, Georgetown ball once again. UConn, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot, just has not been able to play yeah. away in this game. Look, I think what Ed Cooley told us in the locker room before the game was, I just want my guys to compete. I think they're doing that. But now that the next step is discipline, making those bunnies. 
Extra passes, no shoves in the back when you feel like you've got a little momentum. That's just emotion right there. I, I wouldn't even say that's a lack of discipline. That's just emotion from your big. That's his fifth, too, after the technical. That's tough. But Cook is fouled out. I had this conversation with a couple of members of the staff, Ryan Blaney, Ivan Thomas, and they said, we just need Supreme to understand you're getting starter minutes, meaning you got to play like a starter. No silly fouls. We need you to stay on the floor. And that's a situation where you're, you're a guy who is not used to being in the limelight like Supreme Cook has been this season. got to understand how important you are to your team on the floor and obviously not on the bench. Well, that's the difference between a team that might be above 500 at this rate instead of eight and eight. They've had some close games this year, and Georgetown's actually five and three in games decided by seven points or less. But they had a tight loss early to Holy Cross. They blew an 11 point lead in that game. They had late possessions they mismanaged. Get T TCU, they had the buzzer beating loss at home. They led Seton Hall with under four minutes to go earlier in the week. Epps leans in and lays it in. Lead down to 10. The Huskies now looking for the knockout punch. And fighting here with Heath. Heath off the switch, guarding Spencer. Spencer trying to split his way to the lane, beating Castle from outside. Too strong on the three. Rebound tapped back out by Epps to Heath. Here come the Hoyas in transition. A sued foul. I, I do like the way that Georgetown is competing. You know, all due respect to the teams we've seen the last few seasons, they'd get it going and they'd back up a little bit. Again, the one thing you're going to get from an Ed Cooley coach team, and, and credit to him and his entire staff, is play hard. You just don't realize how many great things come from playing hard. You might not make, make every shot. You might have a couple turnovers, but if you play hard, it, it just sets a precedent. Right? It, it starts a culture, a new culture, if you will. But what a game for Supreme Cook. 18, 13, and, and really not a... A walking double double. That, that's only his fourth double double this season. It shocked me when I looked at the numbers. It just seems like a guy that just kind of carries himself that I'm getting every rebound and I'll give you five, six buckets every game. Uh, Spencer now has four fouls for UConn. And whistle on the other end of the floor here as Newton tried to flip that ball to the back four. I love it. Coach Hurley's up, screaming, yelling, and He's continuing to let the refs know. And the thing about Dan Hurley is, you know, it's, I heard once, once you, once the toothpaste comes out of the tube, it's very difficult to put it back in, Alex. And, and Hurley is one of those guys, once you get him going, the refs, you know, they got a little back and forth. You just, you got to love that about him. The fire, the, the, the players, there's his dad, mom and dad. Had a chance to talk to them before the game. They're just they're they're eating it all up. They're loving it. This is what college basketball is all about, Alex. Well, the, you were telling everybody in the building about you know your team that went to number one in the nation. First ever UConn first, team. That's ever. right. The first because I know you're not going to say it right. The first team <laughs> ever UConn <laughs> history. Hey, Burley is the only coach not named Jim Calhoun to put the Huskies in the top five. That's it. Styles, and this goes back to Georgetown. The lead is only nine for the Huskies. I, I will say this though: someone made the point when all the number one, when all the top four, four of the five teams lost this week. You know how many days was UConn number one last year? Zero. So, but I will say.
I mean, it's important because we're still talking about I'm still talking about 60 years later. <laughs> Scramble for the ball here, and it's picked up by Stewart. There's the freshman. The late, great job by Jalen Stewart to go up and get that without fouling. John's only losses this year, number five Kansas in a true road game at Seton Hall early in league play. Big block underneath, but a foul was committed first by Bristol. Let's take a look back. Down memory lane. The last time UConn was number one in the nation, February of 2009. Gas was 275 per gallon. We, we had the first iPod the other day when we were showing the, uh, the history books in St. John's. It's interesting. And, and since then, three national titles. Yeah. So it tells yeah. you how much, you know, coaches put on being number one. It's more for us, you know, more for the fans. But I will, I have to admit, my coach used to say when, when we weren't picked number one, they would say, okay, they don't believe in you. They don't try. He would use it in practice, and we'd be like, come on. But then when you were number one, he would tell us, oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I'm like, wait, which one is it here? Oh. Well, this, this team, if they if they continue to keep their act together, they'll have a very good chance of winning. Yeah. Health obviously is, is just the, the number one thing you worry about and now Don McClingan already a couple times this season dealing with the, the foot. Yes. <laughs> Somehow they got the rib. A rebound for the Hoyas. He takes it inside and he gets better. And all of a sudden what was kind of a sleepy crowd, they're starting to get frustrated with all these whistles. I thought it was a good no call at the top of the three. I thought Epps was really forcing the issue there, leaning in. There have been 53 combined free throws in this game. All ball. Now, I think what happens is at times is that's a tough thing. We don't see the body that goes into it. And as a defender, when you go up, you're taught, use that body. They're looking at your hands. They're looking at the ball, the officials. So try to use your body. But I thought that was a pretty. He splits the pair. 13 points for Heath. Six shy of 1,400 for his collegiate career. He's in the double digits for the third time in the last four. Trying to will Georgetown back into this game as we cross each side of four minutes to play. Kicks it out. Caravan. Got it from three. Caravan with 26 to tie a career high. Entry pass. Fielder. That's grabbed by Newt. Whistles galore here, but is UConn ready to put the finishing touches on this one? Top blocker. Seven foot two center Donovan Klingon. Oski's looking to get to 15 and two and reclaim a share of first place in the Big East. Fielder, freshman at the line. That's the first down. I just I gotta take a second here and just tell my my partner today, happy birthday, Alex Faust, 35 <laughs> years old. Happy birthday, man. I appreciate you. And I know this cupcake I got you. you I haven't touched it. I need you to eat this right I, now. I, I didn't want right to like, eat it and fall asleep with the sugar high because this game is, is taking a little while. Listen, I was going, I'm not going to be Bill Walton and just like eat the candle <laughs> off the top of it. I should have bought Thank a, you, my friend. I should have bought a bunch of these for this crowd today. You should have. Like, they're looking at it like, wait, wait, why don't we get one? <laughs> 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 that I can spend with you. Same. <laughs> now, it's been a fun one. A lot of whistles in this game, a lot of, <laughs> lot of physical play. And Heath has fouled out now. I think as you get deeper into conference play, any power conference, any conference really, 
it, it gets harder to officiate the expectation of allowing us to be more physical or the expectation of hey they hand check a lot and teams know the good teams know how to control the tempo and the style of game with their aggression and it's harder for officials the deeper you get in into the season i think in a day like today too for uconn this is not a clean game mm. by any means for both teams but these are the kind of games that you have to cut out and win. And as Dan Hurley was talking about it, even the Xavier game, yeah, they're able to grind out the win even when they weren't playing their best. Yeah, those, those are the, the games that championship teams need. Really good. Oh, they thought the crowd did that that was all ball with Castle and the block. Instead, Epps will shoot free throws. Well, our, uh, clearly our refs have no planes to catch so huh, where no. they're going they must have been flights canceled but again the angle is a little tough there might have been on the elbow by castle but because he's such a, a physical presence his reputation will help him if he continues to play that way and that's how coach early wants him to play aggressive smart user strength these referees know they're not flying out of Brainerd, they're going out of Bradley. <laughs> exactly. <the> airport. <laughs> 60 free throws in this game. Now, these are the type of games at Georgetown. They, they know they're going to have to play some ugly ones just as they continue to build. Down into form the way Ed Cooley wants it to play. This is kind of what they've gotten from a lot of their games this year. They it was just a bit of a talent deficit right now. UConn is trying to close this one out. 318 to go. Some press up court from the Hoyts. Husky's able to break it. Diara attacking downhill. He's gonna float it back out and let the clock read. And a really nice close out by Georgetown there. But even better, not forcing the issue by Diara and using some of that clock, like you said. Take it inside, it's hand on the clock. Newton, as he fades away from three, comes up short, rebound Stewart. Boy, the length and the athletic ability of Jalen Stewart. That's like two or three we've seen him go up and grab without fouling. He's going to earn some more minutes the way he's, he's come off the bench. Very limited playing time. Made an impact. Diara down the lane. And it's saved by the Huskies off the steal. Again, those are those 50-50 balls. The championship teams win those most of the time. And Ed Cooley will, he will find those guys. This Georgetown team will start to begin to win those fights as well, those little battles. Attacking right in the lane, bodied up, lost the handle. Two on the shot clock as the Huskies get it back. I'm sure they're going to get this to the Hoyas. The title defense began with a seven-game winning streak to start the season. Big win over Texas early on. Sue pulls down an offensive rebound here, and it goes out of play. They have five quad one wins so far this year. Three and one against top 15 teams. It's hard to go back-to-back. -back. No team has done it since Billy Donovan's Florida Gators. But they've picked up some key wins. Indiana, Texas, UNC, Gonzaga. They've outscored their opponents by 29 points per game. A lot of that's coming early. 8-0 at home. Their only loss in Big East play, December 20th against Seton Hall. Yeah, only undefeated team in the Big East. Good point, and I, I love that they're... Sorry. That they're not shying away from playing teams early in the season. You know, they, they, they played some teams early that you wouldn't see normally until you get to the NCAA tournament. But they have four games down here against top 15 ranked teams. That's a, that's a program record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we talked about it. You know, say, you know, talking about how hard it is to win on the road. Well, 
Seton Hall is not, you know, they're one of those teams that will go in and beat someone anywhere. <laughs> you know, Butler took care of home, but still they dropped one. You, I mean, they're, they're just, you can't, you can't just rely on your fan base and just being at home in this conference. You got to play every single minute of every conference game. The Huskies will next have three. Spencer, why not? He's short. He'll get his own miss. Follow it up. And lay it in. Now the 20. 19 on Wednesday against Xavier. As we approach the final minute. Pass off the backside of Spencer. Five to go, and UConn on its way to a fifth straight win. Well, this week in the Big East, every ranked team lost to an unranked opponent except for UConn. And look, they've shown it again. Undefeated at home, ready to go nine and zero, oh, and they've done it with Klingon, without Klingon. They've reached 80 points for the 12th time this year, and the Huskies continue their title defense by grinding one out against an arch rival here at home. <laughs> 80 to 67, the final. Well, fans can uh, relish in this now because Ed Cooley knows.